Okay guys, so in this episode, I'm going to calculate the expected revenue uh, of the uh, seller in the first price auction. And I am going to keep exactly the same numerical example that I used in the previous episode. So the signals are distributed in zero one interval according to this probability distribution function S square, and therefore the density function is two S. So what I need is the following. I need to calculate once again, the probability, uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I am first going to calculate the expected payment of a, a bidder whose uh, signal is S, and then I'm going to calculate ex ante expected payment, and then I'm going to multiply it by N to calculate the, sorry, expected revenue of the seller. Well, in order to calculate the ex, expected payment of the bidder with signal S, I need to first calculate the likelihood or probability that the bidder with signal S wins the auction. So remember the previous uh, lecture uh, video, I used the notation G of S. So this is the probability that bidder with signal S wins. So uh, put it this way, the probability that the second highest valuation, remember why is the second highest valuation? Don't forget that, I defined it in the previous uh, lecture. So the second highest valuation guy is gonna bid B of Y, so that should be less than or equal to B of S. This ensures what? Well, the, the second, well, well remember uh, we are looking, we looked equilibria where bids are increasing functions. So if you have higher valuation, you should be bidding higher. So therefore, given that B is an increasing function, all I have to care about the second, the, 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 the bidder with uh, the second highest valuation because all the other bidders are going to bid something less than this guy. So the second highest guy, his bid, if it is less than uh, the bid of the first guy, well then, you know what? We are going to have uh, the winner. Uh, so the, the S guy is gonna be the winner. Well, the B is the same function. Remember, this is why we looked at symmetric uh, uh, Bayesian Nash equilibrium. So the B functions will be the same. So if BY is less than or equal to BS, that means Y is less than or equal to S. So that is in fact no different than the G function we calculated in the second price auction, where, or the Vickery auction, where every bidder was bidding his signal. Uh, remember, so the B is not going to change anything in our calculations and therefore the rest of the uh, calculations like expected payment, uh, ex ante expected payment and finally expected revenue will be the same. But I want to show that BY less than or equal to BS means probability Y less than or equal to S. All right, for in the, in the case of uh, first price auction. So how do I do that? Well, let's calculate the bidding function in the first price auction. Remember the bidding function, the symmetric bidding function in the first price auction was this ugly guy. Signal minus an integral divided by uh, the uh, f to the power n minus one. Okay, so here are two things I need to calculate. First, this integral. S lower bar all the way up to S integral, F to the power N minus one T dt. So S lower bar is zero, S is S, and then T to the power, well remember F of T is equal to, instead of S, I just use T. So F of T is nothing but T square. So F of N minus one T is T square to the power N minus one. So therefore it's two to the power two N minus two dt. And it's uh, integral is simple t to the power 2n minus 1 divided by 2n minus 1. Uh, for the boundary values, 0 is going to make it 0, so s is going to make it this. So therefore, this integral is equal to s to the power 2n minus 1 divided by 2n minus 1. Okay, now the second term, well, again, it's simple. f to the power n minus 1 s is nothing but s to the power 2n minus 2. Okay, so all I have to do, divide these two guys and subtract it from S, which is what I do here. If you, well, I'm, I'm skipping these steps, but if you solve it, this is what you're gonna get. 
Okay, once again, if your bid is equal to, uh, I'm sorry, if your uh, signal is S, this is how much you should bid, okay? It clearly depends on the number of players. For example, if N is equal to two, oops, well then uh, what you're gonna bid is four minus two, which is two divided by four minus uh, one, three, two divided by three S. So this is how much uh, the bidder is going to uh, bid given his valuation is S. Okay, so this is the bid. Well, once again, the second highest bid, all right, uh, I, I'm sorry, the second highest value guy is going to have some, uh, some, some signal, let's call it uh, YS, okay, and he is going to bid this much, 2n minus 2 divided by 2n minus 1 YS, well, this is going, or just Y, I don't know why I put YS, there's no need to subscript S. So this has to be, in order to make the S guy the winner, this has to be less than or equal to 2n minus 2 divided by 2n minus 1S. So these terms will cancel out. So therefore, as long as the second highest valuation uh, or signal is less than or equal to the S guy's signal, well, then he is going to win. So what does that mean? Well, that means that means our G function is exactly the same as the G function we calculated in the second price auction, S to the power 2n minus 2. And the small s, the, the density function, is therefore its derivative. So the M, the expected payment of the bidder whose signal is S, is going to be exactly the same as we calculated in the second price auction. And the ex ante expected payment M is going to be again exactly the same. And then the expected revenue of the seller is N times M, which is going to be this, which is again exactly the same as the expected revenue we calculated in this second price auction. And remember, I also calculated when N is equal to two. So if we have two bidders, the expected revenue of the seller was eight divided by 15. Um, I'm not sure uh, we can do that. What happens to expected revenue as n goes to infinity? I mean, as we increase the number of bidders? Well, it's kind of simple to do it. So divide both uh, everything by n. So I have 2 minus 2 over n divided by 2 minus 1 over n. Okay. And then multiplied by 2 divided by 2 plus 1 over n. All right. Uh, the nice thing is, is n goes to infinity, these guys will be zero, this is zero, this is zero. So this is going to be basically two, two, minus, two divided by two, right? Times two divided by two, well, it's just one, okay? So as we increase the number of bidders to infinity, uh, it basically says that the expected revenue of the seller is going to increase. So the more bidder there are, uh, the higher... Uh, revenue, uh, the, the uh, uh, seller uh, should expect to get. Well, is this a coincidence? I mean, the expected revenue in the second price auction and the first price auction are the same. Is it, is it a coincidence? Well, no. Remember the, uh, you know, I think two or three episodes earlier, we mentioned that, uh, you know, first price auction and the second price auction have identical uh, expected revenues. Uh, under certain assumptions. And in fact, this is what we're going to generalize next. Uh, actually, there are a lot of uh, auction methods which leads to the same expected revenue uh, coming up next.